Good afternoon, everybody, and good morning to those of you on the West Coast. This afternoon, we'd like to talk about the frazzled executive syndrome. We like to subtitle this presentation, one of four, uh, as Take Back Your Day. And what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at how a day breaks down for a busy executive. And we're going to dissect a couple of the things that are major components of that day. And then we're going to talk about how you can take back that day and some of the things, the anatomy of, of uh, uh, fixing the time killers that take up your, your time unnecessarily. So let's start with the anatomy of a day. And of course, for some of us, the day starts early and can end rather late. And when we look at what it takes to get through that day, we find that as you get higher up in the organization, you spend much more of your time talking to people, meeting with people, talking on the phone, wandering around the office and having conversations with folks, having people stop by your office. Basically, the day consists of talking to people, whether it's electronically through email or chat, uh, chat facilities on the internet, uh, there's always a conversation going on. And that's correct. That is your role. But let's look at uh, some of the things that, that are really going on there. And of course, ultimately, all these conversations are about knowledge transfer. But um, when we look at, for example, a meeting, what we find is that typically, there's an exchange of knowledge. Uh, there's a review period in the meeting where everybody says what they did, and then somebody talks about what's new in the company, and then there's some planning about what's, what's coming up. So everybody gets on the same page. And uh, on the surface, this sounds like a really good thing, and it is a good thing for people to know. And then finally, you know, hopefully there's some time left to talk about issues. Well, when in fact, when you're having a meeting, the meeting should be about things that are best suited for a meeting environment, a real-time, highly interactive real environment. And so when we look at an agenda for that sort of interaction, we discover very quickly that what's really important about meetings is issues. It's getting together talking about the problems that everybody's facing, and then work together collectively to find good solutions. This high level of interactivity that you can have in a meeting is hard to substitute in other forms, at least not in terms of the kind of compressed time frames that one can solve problems in a meeting, especially if you bring the right tools with you to the meeting. So then when we, we look at phone calls, we find that, that a typical phone call is going to take the form of some greeting followed by a little small talk, some catch up. You know, you want to feel like a human being, and, and there's, that's, you know, understandable. Uh, but sometimes the phone calls can descend into a lot of digression. And then typically there was a reason for that call, and it's a request of some sort, a request for action. And then typically you would agree to, to follow up, or if you were making the request, they would agree to follow up at some future point in time on that, on that phone call. Really, again, this is a real-time conversation. So again, that high interactivity is what's important and valuable about that phone call. So the, the key to making the most of it is to get the problem out on the table and really talk it through and figure out how you're going to handle it and then get actual work and, and resolution assigned. You may not be able to do everything that needs to be done in, in the course of a phone call, but you can at least identify what needs to be done and when it needs to be done by. And then the follow-up is really something that could probably take case, place uh, offline or actually online on a system, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. So knowing that, that there is better alternatives for conducting meetings and, 
and having phone calls isn't really enough. You need to be able to impart these ideas at a high level to everybody in the organization. And what really stands out in, in a lot of organizations is the dependency on what we call tribal knowledge. And tribal knowledge, as the name implies, is something very old. In, in old cultures, uh, the elders would sit around the campfire and they would describe the heritage of the tribe with the younger folks. And they would learn from the knowledge that was in the heads of the elders. And over years of imparting these stories over and over again, they eventually sink in and become part of the knowledge of the younger folks. But this is a long and slow process, and we don't live in an environment today where long, slow processes are very effective. And so what we need is what's called institutional knowledge. Institutional knowledge is a way of somehow placing knowledge that starts out in somebody's head in a place where anybody in the organization who needs it can get to it. And this is really critical because the people that have the knowledge become bottlenecks in progress. So, for example, if you as a leader hold in your head the information you need, then they have to come to you to get it. And that becomes one of those conversations that we call a time killer. So, to take back your day is instead of saying to somebody, oh, the best way to do that is, and have it come out of your brain, you want to take that information and you may have to wait till somebody asks the question the first time to even know that it needs to be part of the institutional knowledge. But you have to take that information, not just tell that person, but go get it into the system so that it becomes part of the institutional knowledge and not your tribal knowledge. To do this, you need tools. And that's really what Unipage is all about. But I will tell you right now that you may have some of these tools already at, at your facility. Uh, a corporate intranet portal can take many forms. And I'm going to just take some, a brief moment here to show you ours. Now, we're not going to have time today to talk about all of the features of Unipage. As I mentioned, it is a complete corporate intranet portal. But what I want to focus on today is the information about knowledge transfer and creating a, a repository for institutional knowledge. And to do that, let's just take a look at one example of how one might store institutional knowledge in the system. And we are going to take a look at our newly created quality management module here. And I am going to take a look in particular at some documents. Because a lot of the information that we gather up ends up in the forms of documents. They could be PDF files or Microsoft Word documents or even uh, PowerPoint slideshows. It really doesn't matter what form they take. The point is, is that they're gathering up knowledge in one form or another into a document. And these documents are only useful to the extent that they can be uh, accessed. And we often store documents in folders on a, on a server hard drive or something where people have to know where they are in order to find them. And here in Unipage, which is built on the Microsoft SharePoint 2010 platform, um, we are able to store information by major departmental category up here. And then down the side here, we have some different items uh, that, that break down. So with one, two, and three clicks, we can get right at the data that we're looking for. And 
So for example, if somebody comes to you and says, gee, how, how do we manage new clients around here? What does that process look like? Well, um, we have the ability with a tool like this to gather that information, document it, and it really doesn't matter so much how you document it. If you want to use flowcharts, you can use flowcharts, but um, if you want to use uh, a, a description in a text format, you could very easily use a Microsoft Word document, or even Excel will work. What's important isn't what tool you use, but that you get detailed information. This is just an example of a, a process flowchart, and we're very keen on flowcharts here at Unipage because we are, after all, a business process automation company. And so this is one visual representation of a process. But what's important here is that the information is readily accessible. And in addition to being able to find uh, products by navigating to them, we also have the ability to search the site here and pull back things that, that we are looking for. And so with a few keywords, we can still find the information that we're looking for. And this is a really important feature because we don't always know where something may be stored. Now the great thing about SharePoint is you can link items stored in one place to another. So in any case, this is really a brief demonstration of the system. And I would like to invite you, if this is something that is of interest to you, to contact us and we would be more than happy to provide a more complete demo. But if you have a tool of your own, uh, I encourage you to more fully utilize it. And next time somebody comes to you and says, uh, can you explain something to me? Hopefully you'll be able to tell them, instead of taking five minutes, let me just point you to where it is on the corporate intranet server. And at this point, for our live audience, I'll be taking questions. Uh, those of you on our recorded version, Thanks very much for attending.